but the what is sometimes a contentious issue for some people is spread, spread betting, gambling. So I'm going to give you my short answer first. And the answer is yes, spread betting is gambling. So years ago, when I, when I first started spread betting, for some reason, which I now understand fully, uh, I couldn't. I seem to be able to make money from buying shares, but not from spread betting. And in theory, there shouldn't be any difference because I was buying the shares in the expectation that they'd go up and sell them if they didn't, which there's not an awful lot of difference at the end of the day, whether you're spread betting or your buying shares, say, in your SIP or your ISA. So the reason I asked the question was that it didn't seem to be working for me. So I've given you my answer. I think spread betting is gambling. And now I'm going to give you my reasons. And I've also exposed the fact that I think that buying shares in a SIP and an ISA is also gambling. So... Why is spread betting gambling? Well, we don't know the future. We're hoping to improve the odds of the success through learning skill and knowledge. Another reason why I concluded it was gambling is that the FCA has declared the profits from spread betting as winnings. And one of the benefits of that is they have a tax-free status. So in the same way as you can bet on a football game or a horse race, and the winnings are deemed to be tax-free, so are the profits from spread betting. So what I'm suggesting here is that spread betting is a game. It's a game built on best guess. And we're speculating on whether the market will go up or down. However, the key point that I think is often overlooked is that there are amateur and professional gamblers in all manner of activities, whether it's cards, horse racing, anywhere where there's an element of skill and the outcomes are unknown. I think that there's this distinction between amateur and professional gamblers. So to reiterate, I do think spread betting is gambling. Now, if you've arrived on this page through Google, two things I want you to understand. Firstly, there's more to my to my answer than initially meets the eye. And secondly, you're possibly asking the question because you're in the situation I was in which is you actually want to know whether you can make money from spread betting. So the quick answer is spread betting is gambling in my opinion. I'm going to explain what the difference is between an amateur and a professional gambler, uh, which at the end of the day comes down to whether you make money or not. So allow me to explain why I think that all aspects of the market are gambling, in my opinion. And before I begin, I just want to point out that I was having doubts. And if that's you, then there's going to be some important information further in, in this article about understanding exactly what you're doing with spread betting and, and how to do it professionally and what can go wrong if you're an amateur. Because I want to make that distinction about the word gambling. So what I've done first is to go and look up the definition of gambling. Looking up definitions is always a good starting point. So Google gives us two definitions from the dictionary. First definition, play games of chance for money, bet, 
Well, that's exactly what we're doing with spread betting. We're not buying anything or selling anything. We're simply placing a bet on the direction of a market. So definition one pretty much sounds like what we do in when we spread bet. Playing games of chance for profit. Isn't that exactly what we're trying to do? We can't know the market direction because we can't know the future. So let's look at definition two. Definition two takes risky action in the hope of a desired result. So also meets definition two. We are taking a risk with our own capital or and we're using the margin of the broker. Now let's be frank, spread betting isn't your normal type of job. You go try and explain to a child or even a friend with no knowledge what exactly it is you're trying to do. You're not buying anything, you're simply betting on its future direction. You could just as equally be betting on the direction of a fly crawling up and down a piece of glass. So you're making your best guess as to what the market will do in the future. If you wanted to be uh, posh, you could at best describe yourself as a liquidity provider in certain circumstances. Um, I mean, you're getting into semantics now. We are essentially assuming risk in the anticipation of potential reward. So I make a strong case that this is gambling. And in my opinion, strictly speaking, all trading in any products or instruments is gambling. Anything where you don't know the future, you are taking a risk. And you will never know the future. So to some degree, everything we do is a gamble. And all of the situations we face in life have a range of probabilities with odds against them the probability of the event occurring or not occurring. So you're hoping to increase your chance odds by gaining information and knowledge. And let's face it, the clues in the name spread betting. Betting implies gambling. So let me give you some things to think about. Things work in the short term that won't work in the long term, and vice versa. And that's very confusing for anybody new to spread betting. It's, you need to understand that you can just as equally get a string of losers and come out on top, i.e. be profitable, as have a string of winners and not be profitable and actually be in a very dangerous situation without realising. So how so? So let me give you an example from life. Let's say there's a 1% chance of a parachute not opening. That means that 99 out of 100 jumps, everything goes fine. So it's possible you can have 99 jumps and be fooled into thinking that parachuting is the safest sport in the world. Equally, you can die on your first jump. which is a completely different experience. You can't be fooled into the randomness because results are randomly distributed. 
So we've said this before, you are building a career on the value of your best guess. There's no knowing in the short run if a trade will be a winner or a loser. You can't predict the future. You have no control. It's a best guess. So if you're new to spread betting, at this point you're probably thinking this sounds awful. And if this is all the information you had, I'd agree with you. Don't take my word for it. Here's what Chris Stringman, who lost £130,000 spread betting from uh, a mobile phone from work, said about it. This was money that he didn't have. In my mind, this wasn't gambling. When you spread bet, you can have all the graphs, digits and news in front of you. You imagine you are a city trader sitting in front of eight screens sh shouting sell. You think you're a master of the universe. And the important point is, that's how he felt at the beginning. By the time he'd lost £130,000 that he didn't have, he went on to say, when in fact you're master of nothing. But, wait a minute, you're going to hear all the time about people who made money and continue to do so. And that's right. IG Index and other spread betting platforms have told us that a small majority of people make all the money, are very, very profitable, and continue to be so. So what information are you lacking? The key point is, just because we're guessing doesn't mean we can't be profitable in the long run. A goalkeeper's guessing which way the player will take the penalty, and obviously some keepers are on average better guessers another in the long run so what is going on I'll come to that gambling is viewed as negative by people that have no edge the word gambling has negative connotations what people aren't considering is this concept of professional and amateur gamblers not all gamblers lose money in the long run there are professional gamblers what separates them is their approach. Professionals approach gambling as a business. They realise that there is one thing they can control, and that is risk, how much they expose themselves. And they generate something called edge, positive expectancy. What is positive expectancy? Allow me to explain. Edge another name for positive expectancy. Consider that when you go to the casino, it is entirely plausible that you can walk in, win, cash your chips up and go home. But that is not a repeatable process. Otherwise, the, the casino would be out of business in no time. The reason a casino stays in business is that they have positive expectancy. They have a calculated edge. They know over a run of spins that there's a certain payout for them. I am told that it's regulated to 5%. So all they need to do, if you've ever been to a casino, all they need to do is keep you at that table long enough for that edge to play out. That is why when you go to a casino, there are no clocks, no windows, and they will offer you free waitress service. You get free food and drinks. And if you're a high roller, you'll be given free hotel rooms. Their job is to keep you at that table for as long as possible until they've cleared you out, until the edge plays out. Anyone that develops a system to combat this edge will be banned from the casino. And a good example of this is Edward Thorpe. And you can go and read his book on the story of how he broke Las Vegas. It's a great book. So what is edge? Well, edge is comprised mainly of win rate and payoff. And note that you need both. Most, most amateur Gamblers, traders, are fixated on win rate. 
and win rate on its own is meaningless. We need both and the relationship between them to tell us if we have edge, which means we need to generate lots of data to understand if we even have edge. And results are randomly distributed, which is why this is all so confusing. And there is an element of rocket, uh, there is an element of luck involved. Remember, we can't control many things, but we can control the risk through position sizing. The tighter the stop, the more damage can be done. So some related questions. I've realised in writing this document that I've introduced beginners to terms they may not be familiar with. Position sizing. What is position sizing? Position sizing simply means that we risk a fixed fraction of our account on every single trade. So every single trade has the same level of exposure. So for example, on my breakout trades, I would risk 1% of account. So all trades have a fixed downside. What is R? R denotes risk. As I suggested in the previous answer, I'm risking 1% of account per trade. So I express my wins and losses in terms of R. It's a better way to look at the ratio between profit and loss. What do you mean randomly distributed? Well, if you flip a coin 100 times, you know the probability of heads and tails is 50-50. But you should also recognise that you can get five tails on the trot or seven heads on the trot. And this happens because whilst we know the probability in the long run, we don't know the expected outcome over the short run. Results are unpredictable in the short run. They're randomly distributed. In the long run, they will accord to the probability of an event. So, quick answer is spread, be is betting, is spread betting gambling. The answer is yes. And I've gone on to tell you why and how there's this distinction between professional gamblers and amateur gamblers.